Hello everyone and welcome to this week's interviews for British Science Week where we are delighted to be interviewing four engineers from TALIS. Today we start with our interview with systems engineer Sarah Milnes. Now uh, my name's Scott and I work at Primary Engineer. For those who don't know this is the Leaders Award competition where we ask the question if you were an engineer what would you do? Pupils from the ages of 3 to 19 anywhere in the UK can join and every single pupil who takes part receives a graded certificate from a real life engineer, just like the ones we interview. We've already started receiving submissions from classes across the UK, so make sure once you've got your ideas written down to send them to Primary Engineer HQ. Just a reminder that the deadline is March 22nd, so we look forward to seeing them very soon. Now, as part of these interviews, we're going to be speaking with engineers who work on loads of different projects, all of them showing the wonderful, interesting and exciting things that happen when you work in engineering. Although we do host them live, the videos can be watched on our YouTube channel later in the week. Now, our special guest is going to start with a 10 minute presentation and then we're going to open up to the audience for questions. If you do have a question, please type them in the chat box in Teams. We unfortunately can't receive audio from the audience, so if you do have a question, simply type it in. But for now, I'm going to hand over to our wonderful special guest, Sarah. Hi everyone, my name's Sarah and I'm delighted to be able to speak to you today and thank you for giving me some of your time. Um, hopefully by the end of today, you'll have a bit better idea of what an engineer is, um, what we get involved with, and some of the challenges that we face in our job. So I would like to take you through a short presentation, a wee video as well for you to watch, and then I'll discuss some of the, the things that we do in Talas and take some questions from you. Good. Okay, so as Scott says, my name's Sarah Milnes and I'm a systems engineer and I work at Talas. Talas has got lots of offices across the UK, but I work in the Glasgow office at the moment. I'll go to the next slide. So, could you be an engineer? And that's for each and every one of you. So, when I was at school, I didn't consider engineering at all. I didn't know what an engineer was, and I didn't understand what it could be. Um, if someone had explained it to me like this, I probably would have been interested in it a lot sooner. So, someone that is creative and practical, maths and science to do some problem solving, yep and having a big impact in the world that we live in. These are all things that I was absolutely into in school, but I didn't realise that that's what engineering was. So if the answer to the que that question is yes for any of you, then you could definitely be an engineer. Move to the next slide. So a good way to explain engineering is a combination of the STEM subjects, science, technology, engineering and maths, but just as important at the other side of the slide, curiosity, great communication skills and dedication. So you, you could be like a, a dog with a bone trying to solve a problem. And that says to me that you would be a good engineer. Move on to the next slide. This is just a simple image to show some of the varied things that engineers do and get involved with. And to me, basically, it covers everything, everything around us, everything we interact with in our everyday lives. Move on to the next slide and go into a bit more detail on that. So engineering industries that you could work in, things that would be opened up to you if you became an engineer. So there's things that maybe seem a bit more traditional, like automotive, working on cars and trains and transport, aerospace, aeroplanes, things like that. Um, even space rockets um, and the energy industry that's maybe things that that's yeah maybe a, a bit more obvious that the engineering would get you into but healthcare is very important um, in the healthcare industry to have lots of engineers um, IT so many not just software engineers working in IT but other types of engineers as well but even things like fashion industry these things all require a lot of engineers and engineering skills. So that's just a wee snapshot of the type of things you could get involved with if you become an engineer. We'll move to the next slide. So a little bit of background about me. So when I was at school, I loved art. Art was my favourite subject. Um, I wanted to go to art school. That was a, a huge focus. But I was also good at maths 
and I was interested in physics when I got to physics later on in high school. Um, so I tried to find something that would fit all of these things. So I loved design, I loved product design, um, enjoyed getting into that at school, but I really just wanted to go to art school. My first choice was product design, which um, is a course at the art school in Glasgow. Um, but then I realised that if I actually went into something with an engineering background as well, there would be a whole world that opens up to me for jobs and careers. So I find a course which is called Product Design Engineering, which is a joint course um, between Glasgow School of Art and Glasgow University. And for me, that was perfect. So that course is half your time, you're in a studio, you're doing design work, you're drawing, you're making things with your hands, you're working in groups and teams to come up with solutions. And the other half of your time, you're in uni, you're studying maths, you're, you're doing exams, all the kind of good stuff that gives you a, a great background in engineering. So that was perfect for me. And there's a lot of similar courses, um, which are a bit more of a, a combination of not just not just doing maths all the time. <laughs> we'll go to the next slide. So I ended up becoming a systems engineer. Now, I wasn't even sure what a systems engineer was um, when I joined Talis. And the reality is that it's a very wide description and systems en engineers do a lot of different things from running the entire project um, to designing products themselves um, and designing software solutions and developing new technology. So I actually started off as a mechanical engineer in Talis and I became a systems engineer as my experience got wider and I wanted to look at the, the overall broad view of a project. So that's how I've ended up becoming a systems engineer. And I now run a team of, of engineers. It's mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, software engineers, and safety engineers as well. So that's the career path that I've taken to get here. We'll move to the next slide. So what is engineering specifically at Talis? So on the next slide, we have, I've got a short video to, that Scott will play for you, which just gives a, a, a little bit of an overview of the variety of things that Talis do and get involved with. So that was a bit of an overview of Talis in general, just to show the, the huge variety of things um, the wider Talis get involved with, including things like satellites as well, which is quite exciting. Um, in, in Glasgow, I'm going to talk about some of the stuff that specifically um, we work on that I'm more familiar with, that come under the headings of submarine equipment, um, military vehicles, and also um, handheld thermal imagers for the military as well. So on the next slide, um, first one I'm going to talk about, which is closest to home for me, is that I work on equipment for submarines. So that can include things like sonar for the submarine to have um, ears to hear round about it and what's happening, and periscopes and what we call optronics masts, which are sort of like a digital periscope, and that's the eyes of the submarine. So that's a couple of things that I work on. So on the next slide, 
thinking about engineering and what challenges we have to face. So some of the things we have to think about, um, if you're designing a periscope or an optronics mast, um, the submarines obviously go deep underwater. And as the deeper you go in the water, the more the pressure is on something that's down there. So we have to design things that withstand that pressure. Um, and you've got you've got windows that are just made of glass in there. So you have to make sure that those windows don't smash. Um, so that's something that, that's really key for us. And something else that, that I didn't think about before I worked on this, these submarines go all over the world and they go up to the Arctic. Um, they put they, they go to the surface in the Arctic, they put the periscope up and oh, there's a load of ice on the window. What do we do? We can't see anymore. We're blind. So you have to think about those kind of things um, and design to the, the conditions that are there. On the next slide, we something else um, we do a lot in Glasgow is vehicles for the military. We put sensors on, on the vehicles for the military. So cameras so you don't want to, to be outside all the time and there's there's a lot of small windows on these vehicles all the time so there's a whole load of cameras put on the outside of these vehicles including thermal imagers as well um, and laser rangefinders too and also we think about the armour that goes on the vehicles to protect protect um, the, the men and women that are that are in those vehicles. So on the next slide Something that's a big challenge designing military vehicles is we have to think about the shock and vibration. Um, they're in a lot of difficult terrain and um, any sort of equipment and cameras that you think of as being quite delicate pieces of equipment, they have to be able to withstand big shocks and lots of vibration. And you still need, need to be able to see a stable image out of these vehicles, even though they're, they're bumping up and down. So that, that's a big challenge. Um, it's a big software challenge. Um, but that's something we do we do in Glasgow and also simple things you're going through a terrain like the one in the photograph your windows get dusty how do you keep them clean um, it needs to be something that's robust it's not just a normal windscreen wiper on a car um, as these vehicles are in very difficult conditions but something like a, a wiper to keep a, a an optical window clean is a very important piece of kit it's the difference between being able to see or not so these are some of the challenges we have in vehicles on the next slide, another area we look at is um, handheld optics for for soldiers um, to use. These have got uh, cameras inside them. They've got thermal imagers as well for night vision, and they've got laser rangefinders on them, so you can see how far away things are that you're looking at. So these are great wee pieces of kit, um, but there's a lot of challenges to designing these, which we'll go into in the next slide. So you're carrying something about all day that's keeping you safe, but you're carrying it about all day. So it has to be light and um, it has to be battery powered. So you've got a lot of kit in there and how do you keep it going? That's um, some of the biggest challenges we've got in these types of equipment. So the last, um, the last main slide really is just a bit of an overview to go back to the wider picture of engineering. All these things work together. We design things that, that that enable people to work together, um, sensor suites that um, enable all the vehicles to communicate together and the soldiers to do their job. Um, there's a, the main thing in engineering is collaboration with other people, working in teams, coming up with solutions that, um, that are the best for everyone. So that's just a bit of a, a wide view on what engineering is and the different types of things you can do. And these are all things that I never even knew about or thought about when I was at school. And if I'd known the variety and the excitement it is, I would have been into engineering a lot sooner. <laughs> so that's, um, that's the end of my presentation. So I believe we're going to move to questions now. As you said, yes, now we're going to open up to the audience for questions. If you do have a question, simply type it in the chat box in Teams. But I have a question to start, Sarah. Um, mm -hmm. What do you love about your job? Oh, I love the variety. Um, I love that I can be involved in one thing one day and a completely different challenge the next day. I love working in a team, um, having new graduates and apprentices come in all the time, um, getting them up to speed, getting them excited about what we're working on. Um, and I love the fact that actually on in where I work in Glasgow, we've got manufacturing on site as well. So we actually design stuff and make it as well. And it's great to see that whole process from start to finish. 
Well, it definitely looked like there was a lot of variety in it. Um, so we've got some questions coming in from schools across the country. This question comes in from Nether Robertland Primary School. Um, there is a lot of trial and error in engineering. Do you find that irritating or fun? Oh, um, <laughs> fun for sure. Um, so we get to design things, try them out and then test them, which is great. And every time you do a test, you'll learn from it. And that's you might not even learn um, just for that product or that piece of equipment. You'll learn for the next time you do it. So, yeah, it, it's great. It's great fun and not annoying at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've got some more questions. This one comes from Mrs. Scott. And Mrs. Scott asks, what is the first project that you worked on? The first project I worked on was actually the the last product I showed, which was a handheld thermal, oh, wow. thermal imager. So it's a product line that we've had for quite a long time and it's come through a lot of evolutions. Um, it's moved on a lot from when I started working on it four, 14 years ago. Um, but we were developed, I, the first thing I worked on was the straps for the um, the vehicle to hold it at the sides. So it was it's quite chunky, it's maybe about three, three kilograms um, and they have to hold it. And we realized we needed some hand straps around the side to make it easier for them to hold it. So that was, that was the first wee project that I worked on as a graduate. Wow. And when you make a project like that, is that just it finished or are there constantly people looking at it, looking to improve it, finding out what the people who use it say? How does that work? Yes, we get um, we actually get soldiers in um, for feedback and we get um, submariners in um, to ask them what they want for products. And um, we have workshops all the time with people um, to get feedback. We do trials where a product is not fully designed, but maybe at a prototype stage, we'll take it out for trials and get feedback um, on how people interact with it, what they would like to change about it. So it sounds like, because one of the things you highlighted in the presentation is that along with what you do, there are quite a few challenges. And this question has come in from Mrs. Scott's class about that, which is, what is uh, the most challenging part of your job? Oh, the most challenging part of my job? Um, probably making sure that there is a balance struck between meeting all the requirements for what, what is needed and something not being too expensive or too difficult to make. Um, obviously, you want to make a product that, that hit, ticks all the boxes, but that's actually usually not something that happens. So it's compromise. So it's, it's trying to, to meet the cost that you want to meet and also make the product do what it needs to do. I'd say that's definitely the biggest challenge. So it sounds like since there's, there must be so many different people involved in a project, and uh, the Humphreys class has a question about um, how many types of engineers are there? Mm, that's a really good question. So well, I can think of about eight maybe. So mechanical, electrical and electronics, systems, safety, software, um, we have engineers that are through life support engineers. Oh, um, and then the different categories within. So you've got a uh, firmware engineers, which is a part of electronics. Um, so that's just within my little sphere of engineering. So there's probably a lot more than that. <laughs> you know, chemical yeah. engineering, um, structural engineers, all the kind of stuff outside my scope as well. Wow. So there's definitely lots of options out there. Lots and lots of options. Yeah. So um, we've had a few questions in about yourself, Sarah, and uh, quite a few people have asked this, but this one comes from year five at Alderman Cogan's primary school. Um, what made you want to be an engineer? Was it a moment that sort of inspired you when you were younger or what was it? Yeah, I liked, I liked building things and I liked designing things when I was younger. And I think it was the, um, the realisation that I could actually use the fact that I liked maths and was good at maths and those things about designing and building things, I could bring them together and that was actually what an engineer was. And that was really the realisation for me that I, I didn't know that that's what that was. Yeah. And I had an idea that engineering was quite boring and that you were maybe just sitting doing sums all the time. But it's absolutely not that. Um, and knowing that I could get involved in design was 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 what did it for me yeah love it yeah well you should you talked about how much you like art as well and how passionate you yeah. were so it sort of ties the things together yes it does it absolutely does so it was that it was just that realization that that's what that's what i could do in engineering so it sounds like you really enjoy being an engineer but uh, carla at king case primary school would like to know if you could choose any job in the world would you stay an engineer 
Oh, that is difficult. That is difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I could, if I could just cuddle dogs all day, I think I might, that would, I might choose that. Would be an that, amazing job. <laughs> it doesn't pay very well. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, other than, other than something that didn't pay me at all, um, yeah, absolutely, I would, I would choose to stay in engineering. It's great. Brilliant. So we've got some more questions in about what it's like to be an engineer. So this one comes from um, Tala Rose. Um, have you ever messed up a product while being an engineer? Yes, yes, I've I've made mistakes. Um, I put something in a product upside down once. I designed oh, wow. it in upside down, which meant that um, the Im- <laughs> the image in the product was upside down. These things happen in engineering. You make mistakes. Um, you learn from them. It was, yeah, it was just a, a mistake. It wasn't checked enough. You learn from these things. The team. The team help you fix it, um, and you move on. Basically, so I think it, it's okay. It's okay to make mistakes, and and uh, it's something that everyone does. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So we heard about the first project that you worked on, and um, but we've got a question from Nicholas in Mrs. Clark's class. Nicholas asks, "What's the hardest problem you've had to solve?" Oh, the hardest pro- problem I've had to solve. Mm, that's a difficult one. Um. I think it's about, so if you think of periscopes coming out the top of a submarine, yeah. Um, what do you do if the periscope bumps into something? <laughs> <laughs> um, so you have, I don't know if you've ever seen these things in, in, in Canada, um, when they cut down all the trees, they float them on the water. Oh, to to move to move them around. So they cut the trees down and they put them in the water. It's easier to transport them. So you end up with logs everywhere, and sometimes these logs get loose. <laughs> and think these sort of things can be hazards. So I think wow. you can bump into something like that. Um, how do you how do you stop that from damaging the piece of kit, or how do you stop it from from hitting off other things and getting damaged? That's that's a big challenge. A big yeah. challenge. I never would have thought, much like I never would have thought about the fact they might freeze, they might hit something on the way up. They might hit something, and also on the ice, um, they surface in the Arctic as well, so they have to go through massive metres thick of ice, um, wow. so how do you stop things from getting damaged when they're going through that and still work at the other end of it? So yeah, these are huge challenges. So it sounds like a lot of the stuff you work on happens all over the world. And we've got a question from Mrs. Scott's class. Do you have the opportunity to travel as part of your job? Yeah, um, I do. Uh, I have two colleagues that I work with every day that are currently in India working on a project. Um, So I I could have been there this week. Um, So, yeah, there's opportunity to travel. And and certainly in in, in Talas, you, you get asked every year, would you like to travel? Would you like to be located somewhere else? So, yeah, there, there is lots of opportunities if you want it. Wow. Um, so, I mean, and as you say, you've got team members out in India just now. We've got a question yeah. here from year five in Whittlefield. Um, how many people do you work with? So, um, in my office, there's about 700 people. But I would say directly on a, a day-to-day basis, I probably interact with about a team of about 20 um, so it's it's manageable. Um, it's not too much. You get a chance to talk to everyone, but yeah. it's 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 a good team and a and a diverse team. But then I, on more than a day to day basis, I can interact with about a hundred different people in work as well. So it's wow. it is good. <laughs> a lot of in- a lot of exciting and interesting people as well. I bet. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, so about the projects that you work on with some of your colleagues, we've got this question again from Nether Robertland Primary. Do you prefer inventing something new or improving something that has already been made? Mm, it's actually much easier to improve something that's already made. <laughs> <laughs> I used to think that it was great to start with a blank sheet of paper, but there is nothing harder <laughs> than starting with a blank sheet of paper. So, yes, I enjoy improving things um, because it's it's easier and you get to see what's working and what's what's not working. Going back to the trial and error question, um, that's that's a lot of engineering is the trial and error process and gradually improving things. 
Wow. Um, well, yeah, so, especially when it's something so brand new, it probably takes quite a long time to come up with it for yes. the first time. So. Yes, it does, yeah. <laughs> um, so thinking about all the different projects that you've worked on, we've got a quite an interesting question from Johnny in, in Mr McClintock's class. Uh, what is the most complex materials you have used? Hmm. Um, so I've worked on 3D printing of materials. So that's probably the most complex in that it's, although they're not uncommon materials like steel or titanium, mm -hmm. when you look at 3D printing, you have to look at all sorts of different considerations for the design. So but the advantages are that you can design something that's a completely a crazy structure, um, almost organic looking structure, and you can design that on, on CAD and then you can get it made in, in whatever material you want. But you have to think about the different considerations of how the material is printed um, and how it how it interacts with, with other materials. So I would say that's that's been the biggest challenge has been looking at 3D printing, but obviously a, a really fun and interesting challenge. A really cool one, yeah. yeah. Um, so um, with uh, all the different things that you've worked on, uh, this question has come in from loads of different schools. What one has been your favourite project? My favourite project? Um, I think my favourite one is the first product I worked on, which was the wee, the wee handheld um, imager, because it's it's you can take it around. I've taken it into schools before for them to have a look at. Um, you can get lots of different types of um, camera on it and, and different types of day vision, night vision, low light camera, which is slightly different from thermal imaging. And then thermal imaging, and it, you can do lots of different things with it. You can point a laser at things and, and see how the stuff is and get a, you get a re-range reading on your screen that you're looking at. Um, you can just stick batteries in it or you can plug it in. It's, it's, a, it's a really cool wee product. And I would say that was that was definitely the most fun thing I've worked on. And it's it looks like a wee compact product and you open it up and just all the stuff inside it is just it's just packed with equipment. So I think that was such a challenge and it's it's a really complex um it's a really complex frame with all the bits mounted inside. So definitely my favourite favourite product that we do. It did look pretty cool. And actually we had a question from year five at Alderman Cogan's about that. Um, can the thermal camera see people running or crawling? Yes, absolutely. Um, so we, and when we go to demo this in, in schools and things, we do tests with, um, you put up something that your eyes can't see through, like um, a black sheet or a bin bag or something, mm -hmm. and then you get people to stand behind it, and then you point the thermal imaging camera at it, and you can see what's going on behind the screen without seeing it. So, yeah, they're, they're quite powerful. <laughs> well, that is, yeah, okay, there we go. That's a pretty good answer. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, we've got quite a lot of people out there in the audience who are maybe thinking about becoming engineers, and this question comes from Ash Class. Um, what qualifications do you need to be an engineer? To be an engineer? So there's lots of different routes in. Um, traditionally, you would go to university and get a degree, but a lot of people I work with now have come in uh, straight from school as in an apprenticeship. Yeah. And a lot of apprenticeships now, it's a you study a degree while you're at while you're working. Um, so we've got a lot of people doing that now. Um, so you're actually working three or four days a week. You get to go to uni one day a week um, and you study. And it, over the, the four four years or so you get a degree at the end of that but you're also you're earning money at the same time yeah. you get experience at the same time it's a great way into engineering and also you can see if if, it, if it's for you um but yeah other than that you study a degree at university you can go and do hncs hnds and then progress um there's lots and lots of different routes of engineering and we've had a lot of people come in um straight from school and 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 then straight from uni as well so there's lots of different pathways to becoming an yeah. engineer yeah, definitely. Um, well, just looking at the time, I think we've got time for just a couple more questions. So if you're sitting on mm -hmm. one out there, make sure you type it in. But this question um, comes from Aria in P5. Um, do you feel that your job still satisfies your passion for art? That's an interesting one. So although I don't get to do as much of that anymore, um, it's more the design side that I get to do, which is which is great and helping with, with maybe how a product will look. But um, but no, not not as much on the on the art side. I have to just 
I have to do that in my spare time instead. <laughs> Well, it's a good hobby to have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, I think we've got time just for one more question. And this is a really good question that's come in um, from, uh, I think it's E. Kelly's class. Um, do you have any advice for the budding engineers in Mars class about how to find problems that need to be solved? Oh, how to find problems that need to be solved. Yes. Um, speak to people. See, the more you speak to people, um, the more you find out that, yes, there's problems that, that exist that you don't know exist. Um, see what people have difficulties with. Um, think of things being used in different conditions that they wouldn't, you wouldn't maybe think of. Uh. Um, a lot of engineering is about you know making sure products work in all different conditions. So that's that's something to think about. Um, think about what's unusual and uh, difficulties people have. But main thing in engineering that um, that I touched on earlier is, is communication. Just talk to people, ask people what what bothers them, and that'll uncover problems. I'm sure. Brilliant. Well, yeah, well, I've talked to people, find out what the problems are. I'm sure that yep. the Mars class come up with some ideas for them. Um, but just look at the time. I want to say thank you very much to everyone for joining us, but a massive thank you to Sarah for inspiring all the engineers in the making out there, because now it is your turn to come up with your own engineering ideas. Remember and send them to us as soon as you're finished so that we can get your certificate sent out and then we'll hopefully see you at the public exhibitions at the end of the school year. Don't forget the submission deadline for this year is March 22nd, so make sure you get them sent to Primary Engineer HQ once you've come up with your ideas. But for now, I want to say thank you to everyone again, but a massive thank you to Sarah. And remember, if you were an engineer, what would you do? <laughs>